Hi everyone, Charles from The Food People here. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It's my great pleasure to welcome Breege Donahue, Director of Delicious Food from the Co-op. Welcome Breege and thank you for joining me today as part of The Food People in conversation with. At The Food People, we're very clear about why we do what we do. We're champions of change driven every day by our intent to shift the future of food and drink by harnessing the power of trends. And this In Conversation With series is all about talking to other people, businesses, brands and entrepreneurs to find out more about why they do what they do, how in their way they're championing change and shifting the future of food and drink. Thanks so much for joining me today, uh, Breeze, and In Conversation With. I'd just like to start by asking you, I mean, it's been a, uh, an unprecedented time in the world of food and drink. I just wanted to see where you're at, how you found the last four months of, you know, the highs and lows and what perhaps some of the opportunities are there for the co-op. Thanks, Charles, for having me. I'm really looking forward to this session. Um, I think like many, it's been a really unprecedented time. Um, and from my perspective, one of the, probably the strangest times in my career. Um, as a business, you know, we've seen a real shift in terms of how customers are shopping. The initial few um, weeks was really challenging. We saw a lot of customers starting to really shop from heavy bulks in large supermarkets. And actually, when you look back at the data, March was the biggest month of grocery sales ever recorded. Yeah. Um, there were over like nearly 11 billion in a four week period, which is just outstanding. The real change for us really came post lockdown um, when the convenience mission really kicked in and it exploded. Um, we saw about 56% of households shopping in convenience during the lockdown period, um, which was grown more than any other channel, including online. Um, the first few weeks of lockdown, we had real interesting shifts in terms of the dynamic of our categories. Our ambient business quickly um, kicked through. Everybody was kind of stocking up on alcohol, which was interesting as, yeah. you know, the social piece kicked in. But we quickly saw that flowing through for us into our fresh food business. Um, we have been over the last number of weeks really trying to connect with our customers and listen to kind of what some of their challenges. So through our insights team, we've been monitoring their behavior and habits and trying to pivot our offer to make sure that we're meeting their needs. Um, and we really have brought some exciting innovation to the platform, but we've got even more to come as we look forward. Um, but from an overall business perspective, as a community retailer, um, I, I'm really, really proud how our 60,000 colleagues have risen to the challenge of feeding the nation. Um, they have been on the front line. They have been the face of the co-op, um, listening to our customers and our members, hearing how they're feeling. And they've been doing everything to work around the clock to make sure that they've been um, delivering the essential goods and services that we need. Um, I think I think really interesting piece around the situation. It's really given us an opportunity to reinforce our principles of being a convenience community and cooperation retailer. Um, as consumers wanted to stay at home and be closer, they started to shop much more locally. And for us, that's when we really started to reconnect um, and have some new customers come across our door, which has been absolutely fantastic. That's that's brilliant, and they really have been at the, the 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 forefront of servicing the nation's need for food and drink, haven't they? And and we we've had some you know, perspective from our side on why on on why that is, and and why people were sort of opting in to um, uh, to local, yes, for speed and convenience, but it also it felt like they could go into a convenience environment and not have the exposure to. Um, other people or indeed the virus um, and that that um, dwell time was shorter and again a, a lot around exposure uh, what are your thoughts on, on on why that shift into the convenience space there definitely was that safety piece for customers you know um, actually and also there's the piece around queuing for the bigger box retailers yeah. and people didn't want to have that because time was a necessity for them as well so after they've kind of done their bulk shop actually what they were realizing the breadth of range convenience can actually have offer to offer in service um and i think you know there's a lot of customers have gone through a reappraisal of us as a brand in terms of when they started to shop with us in terms of we've had full availability in terms of our fresh produce our protein etc um, so they were finding they could get what they needed in a quick period of time. Um, and as you say, safety and that 
um, lack of interaction with people in that period of time was really important to them. Um, we quickly implemented the social distancing within the stores. So actually the feedback from when we've been listening to through our customers, your store, your say, has been really positive in those metrics. So it's been great to know that we've done a great job. Yeah. I think the other piece, and this is obviously one of the reasons I really wanted to to, to chat to you, is also that deeper um, connection. It's being part of a community when we're all in uh, isolation and lockdown. The thing that you crave is a little bit of human connection, a little bit of real world connection. And um, that for me is certainly something that convenience in, and in particular the co-op have been able to give over and above just you know food and drink and basic sustenance what are your thoughts on that um you know one of the things for us is as a community retailer we we want to connect with our customers um and it, it's quite interesting many times when i've done the shop before covid um you, you realize that the people on the front line know their names. They know the names of the people who come in. And actually probably at this time, it's more important than ever to have that. They can have that little chat. But equally, a lot of our um, colleagues in the store have done a fantastic job of recognizing some of the people who were shielding and couldn't come and actually were doing doors drop deliveries for them to help them. And that's when you kind of know that you, you can really make a difference in a community. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And that, and that really, I guess, leads on to um, the co-op purpose. And I guess, a, a, you know, a really straightforward question is, what is the co-op purpose? And, um, and how do you and, and co-op colleagues live that purpose day to day? Um, you know, it, it, I find it quite interesting. Last year, I heard um, our CEO, Steve Morales, talk about it in a, the most elegant way. But to summarise, our vision really is about cooperating for a fairer world. Um, we're about, you know, as a business, we believe that it's the small acts of cooperation all add up to make a really big difference. And it's about helping to serve the communities in which, you know, we've got the privilege to have our shops. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of our brand strap line is co-op, it's what we do. Um, and that's really what it's about. It's an ethos that runs right through our company. Um, you know, we're owned by 4 million members and each of whom have a voice to say how we run our organization, which is quite unique. Um, and we talk to our members on a regular basis because they help us stay true to what we do. Um, obviously it's important we deliver strong commercials like any other retailer. But actually, the more successful we are, the more we can actually return that into our communities. And you can see that through our membership program um, where we have the five on one where customers can have 5% off their, their own brand products that they buy, but 1% goes back to their communities to make a difference. Um, the pandemic has really highlighted, you know, how I've said before, how amazing our colleagues are. And, you know, we've had some fantastic stories and activities of colleagues going above and beyond. Um, what they what any individual do so you know helping the vulnerable um, in terms of their shopping like I said but actually you know we've raised monies to provide um, school meals in our academies um, and we've provided five million meals through fair share for those who are kind of feeling very vulnerable and going hungry um, and that's one of the things that you know we are really proud of you have to look at a, at a wider scale of where people feel in the impacts um, and where can we make that difference? So what does it mean to work for a company like, uh, like Co-op that has um, values and principles that are so clearly defined as they are? What does that mean for you as Director of Delicious Food and, and how that plays out every day and what you, you and your team do? So, you know, I've worked in the industry for more years than I cared to mention. Um, and I joined the business eight years ago. I always judge it by Dylan's age, she's my son. Um, and it was it's interesting because I I've had lots of experiences in lots of different areas, but I joined the business because they truly believe in what they say and they deliver it. The social conscience that us as a co-op carry is is what is basically what we believe and what we value is has to play out in the world we live in, no matter how small. And each individual within the business can do something to have a positive change, and that change is is for good. Um, and, you know, I tell my kids every day, the choices they make will make a difference. So for me, knowing that I have the opportunity to lead a team of talented people who 
source and create products that are not only delicious and inspiring and innovative, but also does good and has, has that added dimension that makes the job, my job, I feel one of the best jobs in the industry. Um, to, bring it, to bring it to life for you, um, you know, I had the privilege over the last number of years of traveling out to the Cote d'Ivoire and Kenya to see firsthand the difference in the communities that we make by championing and supporting fair trade. Yeah. We, um, we were the first retailer back in 1998, right before my time, um, to sell fair trade in all our stores. And over the years, we've grown our ranges from coffee, tea, bananas, sugar, wine, cocoa. Um, and we've continued to get, kind of look for other areas that we can move into. Many other businesses have made a choice to step away from that scheme, but having visited those countries and seeing firsthand and speaking to the people in those communities and the difference that I know that makes to them really resonates because that's the support we make unlocks things for those communities that many of us take for granted. And it's very humbling when you're on the ground and you're in those villages and you can see how they produce your food and what actually we give back to them by supporting fair trade. Um, so, you know, they can build schools, they have access to clean water, they have educations, they invest in gender equalities. And those are things that I don't think people see, but actually knowing as a business that we are committed and we make that difference. Um, you know, I'm really proud that if you look behind, I always say to my team, if you look behind the label of our products, and if I could tell the story that we have that sits behind them, what an amazing piece that would be. Because as a business, we have great heritage in terms of what we do. And the commitments we make are long-term commitments because we know it's the right thing to do. Yes. So, you know, we, we sell 100% British because we know that that's the right thing to, to support our farm and communities. We know that actually by selling free range eggs in everything, not just in, in the plain egg that you buy, but every ingredient we have is the right thing to do from a welfare perspective. So for me, overall, the business that I joined has the values that align to what I believe in, in terms of it's the right thing to do. Why are those things, I mean, and I'm asking, I suppose, as, as, as Breeze as much as the co-op, why are those things important to you? You, you know, why, just, why go that extra mile? The bit for me is, you know, I, I, joined, I joined the co-op to create the best food. And the best food isn't just about quality and taste, but an innovation, but it's equally as important to have the provenance and ethics that sit behind it. Because um, historically, if you look at convenience, you wouldn't have been known for high quality innovation. Uh, but when I joined the business, I wanted to make sure that with my fantastic team, that we had equally the amount of passion for the product and the taste, but actually making sure that the, the way we do it, the way we produce it, the way we source it, actually was the best that could be and actually could make a difference to the people and to the planet on how we do it. I think um, my top line of delicious food conveniently kind of sums <laughs> up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you've touched on some of the, the areas um, that purpose, purpose affects. Does it also reach into areas like health and well-being and supporting the next generation of um, either, you know, kids or young people? Or what are some of the other areas that um, the co-op vision touches within your work? We've touched on some of the key areas of purpose around community and sustainability. Does that also carry through into areas like health and wellness and supporting future generations, that, that type of thing? Um, we, we set out a guiding set of principles under our future of food agenda. Um, and those principles for us is around how we operate. And we created three key pillars that we, we talk to throughout, whether it's our trading teams, the delicious food team, and on, on a broader basis. Um, and the, the first one is around sourcing and creating with care. So for that, that means that all products that we create is res with respect for the people and the planet and made with quality and sustainability at the heart of it. The second pillar is really around treating people fairly. And this means that 
In any business, the way we operate, people are at the heart of everything we do. And those who make our food are facing uncertainty when it comes to the economy and the environment. And that's why we want a fair deal and a resilient livelihood for everyone in our supply chain. So our teams will go back to the source to really understand the impact that we have and understand how we can actually support them in a different way. And um, our third pillar is, I think a lot of the time we talk about educating people, um, but actually this is around learning and celebrating together because we realize everyone has a role to play in how we operate. Um, and whether it's in our home or out of home, our daily lives have an impact on, our, on the way of our future of food. So our aim is with our member and customers and, and future generations is to identify what matters most and help them, for them to help us understand how we need to drive change and create sustainable solutions. Um, and I think that's what kind of holds us true. Those, those principles help us to kind of have a broader view. So it's not just creating a product to get it to shelf. It's around seeing the whole impact that it can have. Yeah, definitely. I, I love the unity element of it as well. And I know you haven't used that word explicitly, but um, one of the things that really energizes us is the unity that comes with food and drink, just because it's something that we all need. Um, it brings us all together. Um, for some of us in the world, that's very easy. For others, it, it is more difficult. But ultimately, we, we're united around a, um, a need. And that that subtly comes through in everything that you're saying, which is really, really inspiring. As Charles from The Food People, I want to be known for shifting the future of food and drink by harnessing the power of trends. Can I ask you what you want to be known for? Um, it's an interesting question, Charles, early in the morning. Um, so I think I've spoken quite a lot about the co-op purpose and the values, but for me personally, I suppose what I want to be known for is creating and producing the best food in the market. And what I mean about the best food is, of course, quality, innovation, taste, but equally in the slightly different pieces that it has provenance and ethics. Historically, convenience wouldn't have been known for high quality innovation and ethics, but that's what I set out to do eight years ago when I joined the business. And I wanted to ensure that we continue that journey and, you know, with my fantastic team who are as equally as passionate to ensure we continue to make a difference in how we create delicious food conveniently. It's, it's, a, it's a competitive market out there um, and actually everybody has a passion for food. Um, and everybody wants to enjoy food. And as you described earlier, it, it unites people. Um, but actually by uniting people, not just by the food that they eat, but understanding the difference that they can make when they choose certain products is I think is what is, is different. Just as we um, wrap up, I've got a couple of other questions for you. Um, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges more broadly in food and drink? And what, what's the part that you feel the co-op can perhaps play in addressing some of those? Look, it's, it's, an, it's an unknown world at the moment, isn't it? The norm's not the norm anymore. Um, and I think we'd all love to have a crystal ball and be able to predict what yeah, the next... Especially. <laughs> <laughs> especially you guys. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a, just a moving feast at the moment. But, you know, having looked back over what's, what, you know, what we've described as unprecedented times, we have seen a real shift. We've seen like the landscape really move and the, the way people shop has changed. Um, for us particularly, you know, we've seen people shopping more online with us as well which is absolutely fantastic because as we've got an online business that we're trying to accelerate, but you know, we will continue to do things like delivery. We'll look at automated robots and we'll be doing the same day delivery. Um, but I think the challenges that people are seeing at the moment is, is a moving feast. Um, one of the biggest things that we do know is that people want to know where their food comes from. So we think food provenance um, will continue to be very important to particularly our customers and members, but I think to a wider piece, but people want to know that they're buying good quality. It's, it's got good welfare, it's health, and it's got the right standards around it. So we'll continue to support our farming communities um, as we move forward, because those are, you know, those are the, the heartbeat of what we do. Absolutely. Yeah, very much the, 
the unsung heroes of, of the food and drink industry. And I think for, um, for us, one of the things that we've observed is this reconnection, this desire to want to reconnect with um, local food, um, communities, ecosystems, farmers, and, and so on as well, partly um, due to wider agendas, um, you know, bigger forces that are happening around Brexit and things like that. But I think also it's given an, uh, an emotional connection to the food, which has been much sought after over the last sort of three or four months. And I mean, we'd certainly expect that to continue into the future. The, the, you know, the dopamine hit, the feel good that comes from you know, supporting um, you know, a, a local community you know, enterprise or a farmer or those types of things. That's, it's very powerful. Yeah, and I think you know, we've got great heritage in what we've set out to do with supporting um, local local producers and particularly our farming communities. Um, you know, we call them our national treasures. You know, they are they have, they have faced really challenging times, um, and actually, you know, the future with as you alluded to, Brexit is going to be a challenge. But we're we're really proud that we have a hundred percent British in all of our protein. We have farming groups set up from our dairy perspective. So they're really important. And actually for our members to continue to tell us that, that that is what they want us to do. And that's why it makes us different. I suppose the, I'll ask the question in the, the other way. So I asked about challenges. Um, what do you see as some of the great opportunities that have perhaps emerged out of this that are untapped that you know, you'll be in a position to deliver against from a consumer perspective? Where, where do you think perhaps some of those opportunities lie? I think, you know, with, with our focus at the moment on convenience, we know that we've got to create value for money um, because we know that, you know, it's going to be challenging times ahead um, because... We, you know, the new norm, we don't know, but we know that there is going to be some challenges or from an economic perspective. So within a looming recession, that is going to bring customers, to, you know, it's going to hit customers' pockets. So we need to be able to be able to deliver with that great quality for them at the value and the price that they need it. We also know that there's probably one or two platforms where we'll continue our journey um, to really elevate, but one to two of them to talk to you about is obviously sustainability. Um, and, you know, in our research, it's highlighting that sustainability remains very much the center of the issues that consumers want retailers and manufacturers to address. Um, and it's our belief as we come out of the crisis and, and the resulting recession, there, inevit there inevitably will be a focus on price. But there will also be a recognition of how small and fragile our world is and how quickly challenges in faraway places ripple into our communities. Yeah. You know, a new mantra that we think will emerge, will hopefully will follow, will be, you know, we need to reduce our carbon, we need to protect the planet, and we need to be saving lives. And, you know, as much as we care for communities locally, um, we recognise the need to look after communities who are on our supply chain. Yeah. We produce our food globally. And they, unfortunately, you know, um, at the moment, are probably the ones that are most exposed. Um, and this links back to what I described earlier, the future of food strategy, where we've kind of, we recognise the need to kind of look beyond and how we produce and source our food. Um, the second area that, you know, that I think the pandemic has really escalated in people's mindset is health. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's no surprise that, you know, the over the last number of months, consumer focus has been on household and personal hygiene products. Yeah. But I think it's also elevated a new high around the mindfulness of consumers themselves are likely to want to become more healthy as a result of it. And therefore, similar opportunities exist to strengthen our proposition for um, healthier diets and lifestyle. We know people are exercising more. We know they're eating more scratch cooking and probably have more time um, to focus on their health. So we have a role to play to make healthy food affordable and accessible. And that means we need to focus on the design of our products, yeah. uh, but also the breadth of our ranges. Um, so moving the dial from potentially more fully prepared to assembly to scratch cooking. Um, and as you've alluded to, Charles, in some of your updates recently, the role that plant has in the future. Yeah. And that's only going to continue to grow and it's very much focused in our plans.
So that concludes this episode of the Food People in conversation with Breege. On behalf of us all at the Food People, thank you so much for joining me today. You've given us a fascinating insight into how you both personally as Breege, but also as the co-op are shifting the future of food and drink. It's been a real pleasure to speak to you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Charles. Do join our TFP community for details of our recent In Conversation With episodes, as well as all of the latest free to access trends, content and future foresight. Visit thefoodpeople.co.uk and complete your details at the footer of the page. On behalf of myself and everyone at TFP, thanks for listening to The Food People In Conversation With. How are you shifting the future of food and drink?